What is Shed Wars? Well, it's an effort to teach people about how to grow their own food or to find enough food uh, to keep themselves from getting hungry. Food insecurity, food scarcity, food crisis, higher cost of food, food availability. It doesn't take much looking around anymore to see the things that are on the news and in little articles everywhere. And a lot of people now are waking up to the reality of what is going on. I won't get into a whole lot about um, why it's happening. Won't touch on all of that. But I can tell you this. Food is getting harder to find. And that's getting obvious. And in the very near future, it's going to be more obvious. Now, what am I going to talk about today? I wanted to tell you that. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about nature's food. And how you can actually get out there and forage for a few things. This will be the first in a, in a more concentrated or a more focused series about wild food, wild edibles, the wild things. I'll do it on a regular basis, but not all the time. Give you a few hints, things that I have learned over the years from other people and nature herself. I'm going to bring one of those to you today. Look at this beautiful red sumac, young Red sumac, the berries of this plant were used by the Native Americans um, as food. I'll bring that up in a later, later episode. Everything that we've got to eat, everything that goes in our mouths, the uh, cultivated varieties of things, like this blueberry, this blueberry that's getting ripe here at my place. I have a few blueberry bushes. This one has uh, survived quite well. Uh, this was actually the first thing that I planted here at my place. Both of my children loved blueberries. It is only now, though, in these later years that the hard scrabble ground that I put it in uh, is offering it its abundance. This is some hard soil I put it in. But even back then, over a decade ago, I used some hugo culture principles and buried some wood in the ground, uh, some pine, right along with it. Yeah. And now it's uh, gotten very big, all of them have, and um, provide me with food. But everything that we have to eat um, was at one time one of those wild things. And we grew the best, the biggest, made them better the best squash, the best uh, little grass seeds that became corn or oats or rye. The heavy producing crops that we know today started out as the wild things. And nature and mankind saw fit that they should continue growing. They served a purpose. It's like flowers. You know, I read something that was amazing. Uh, flowers, a lot of the things that we um, uh, give to one another as a sign of love or peace or whatever, these are things, the flowers are something that is actually uses beauty as its way of evolving through the years. The prettier things were grown and made into more prettier things. So some person's idea of beauty is what helped flowers become what they are today. And food, tasty food, is what helped most of our foods nowadays to get where they are. Let me show you a few things today and give you a few tips about nature. <laughs> what you're seeing here is sadness for me. This had a beautiful little berry on it. It's one of the, uh, it's a dewberry or it's another plant that I've got here that had one berry right there, but one of nature's little animals has done got a hold of it, probably a bird. I was gonna show you that one. But um, dewberry, dewberry typically has a very red, very, very red um, vine or cane 
that grows low to the ground and most often it is a hairy it's got a lot of hair on it so this is something else i think or it's not growing in the right conditions for it to make all the little hairs i'm not sure um but it's a very hairy very very thorny uh vine and very tasty too by me and the animals this plantain here just 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 some of the plantain i have okay this is edible it's edible it's medicinal it also works great for um uh, compost tea most any weeds are going to give you some wonderful compost tea all right um and i've mentioned plantain before but for some of y'all it may be your first time finding my channel okay there's there's a few different species of plantain here in the southeast United States, we have broadleaf plantain and we have narrowleaf plantain. And this is edible. Uh, and actually, psyllium, which is a natural fiber laxative, you know, that uh, makes it all easier for us. That's actually made from plantain. It's made from the seed husk of the, the seeds that plantain makes. It's commercially harvested. Uh, grown and harvested off of the uh, narrow leaf plantain. They have a species that they've cultivated to make a lot of uh, seeds on the seed stalk. And so it's harvested. But now, if you didn't know before, you know where psyllium comes from. If you've ever looked on a, on a bottle of uh, fiber laxative or whatever, and you've seen psyllium, but you didn't know what it was, now you know. Greenbrier. Look at this. This is still, um, this is still young and soft coming up out of here. These leaves, these tendrils here, um, are are very much edible. Okay. Greenbrier, Smilax. Look that up. You can find this growing many places, but. Uh, very soon now that, that that stem is a little too hard down here you have a hard time chewing on that but this just breaks off with a little effort okay i've spoken about that but this may be the um first time you're seeing this information or seeing my channel so um green briar the little tips the tender leaves a lot of tender leaves like this on the wild things are edible now beneath here down there in the ground, all right? You find where the greenbrier grows into the ground, there is a tuber. Sometimes that tuber may be a foot deep, but that tuber is growing up under there a little at a time and forming a lot of food. This food was counted on and cultivated by the Native Americans here, on, here in uh, North America. There are many things that are like that, okay? Green briar, look it up. Many species, edible. <laughs> and of course, what what trip to my place would be uh, complete without a trip to my Jerusalem artichoke bed? Also, a Native American food, loved by many people. It's forever food. Everything I've told you about today is forever food. I haven't even mentioned dandelions. Okay, just a progress report here. This is now at the bottom of my neck high. Okay, that's how big the Jerusalem artichokes are. The bottom of my neck, I'm six foot, nah, six foot and shrinking. Let's say that. <laughs> but look at it, it's so pretty. Where does nature like to grow things? Wherever she can. Young pine, pine trees out of the corpse of old ones. Seeds that have found a good place to germinate right there. Learn about pine trees. There are parts of the pine trees that are edible and used for many things. And look at the little babies that I'm so proud of. This is the, uh, the day after. And the nursery for my red mulberries are looking wonderful. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes, the little babies are looking great. I'm a proud daddy. Yep. Now, here's something else here. Wild lettuce. Okay. Look at this. 
Many of you have seen it. Many people have heard of it. Many have not. We all start out learning things at different ages. Some of us very young, some of us very old. My, the things I do, I try not to assume what anybody is, what anyone's uh, level is. So I make it easy for anyone. Or I'm going to try to. Okay, wild lettuce. There are about 57, 58 species that I know of. And they're all very powerful. These are the untamed ancestors of what you count on so many days uh, in their salad bowl or put on their burger. Wild lettuce. I just broke this off. You can see, if I can get the camera to not overheat and focus on this. Uh, let's see here. Well, there's a milky substance that's coming out of this, okay? And people have different names for it. I won't spend a lot of time here on this. This is one of the wild things that have become popular to learn about lately. Wild lettuce. This has medicinal properties, uh, pain-killing properties. It's not addictive, but it is said that it is strong enough to take the place of opiate medications for pain. That could come in handy for you sometime. Uh, it's not addictive. It will not um, serve any kind of function for anyone that's looking for a drug just to, just to help themselves have a good time. Absolutely not. But it will help you deal with pain. This channel, this wonderful lady, TN Woman Tanya Neal, has an exhaustive library of all kinds of things that are the wild things of nature. She has uh, so much knowledge that she's collected. TN Woman Tanya Neal. You go find her on YouTube. And you will find a treasure of the South right there. Her knowledge of things in our part of the world will help you. There are many people out there. She, of course, doesn't have extensive knowledge of something in Australia or New Zealand, Scotland, or Africa or South America. But she knows what's on this Amer North American continent and uh, specifically in the Southeast as well. But someone in your area does have knowledge that's out there. Uh, go look for those people and find them. She is my go-to for things in my area. Okay, I talk a lot about taking a break for nature. And as I am sitting here, I see one. Look at this beautiful thing. Look at this. Look at this amazingness I see in my garden. And I, it, I just got through telling you about Tanya Neal. Look at this beauty. I do not get to see many snakes here. Look at him hunting. He's looking for a mouse or a bug. I, I, this, is, this is an incredible moment for me. Now, I'm just sitting here. And look at how this snake has just come up by me. Is he doing anything to me? No, the snake is just sitting there doing his thing. It's not attacking me, not attacking me one bit. Snakes don't want to hurt us. They want to be left alone to do their snake things. I normally do not get to see any kind of snakes here except for a decays uh, snake, uh, maybe a green snake. And this is an amazing moment. I am so proud to share with folks. Now, see, so many people are so scared of snakes. I love seeing them. Oh. <laughs> and this just happens at a wonderful moment. Look, he's hunting. He's hunting for something to eat that's going to be eating the things in my garden. Oh, and that is a beautiful, beautiful snake. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. This is indeed a wonderful day for me to bring you this video. I'm not going to mess with him too much. That's going to serve. That will serve as my best advice to you. 
let snakes do their thing. Look at him. He's hunting. I'm just going to sit here and watch him hunt. Hey, buddy. Learn about snakes. Learn about your animals. He has very much a place here at Homestead Aquarius. I'm extremely proud to have him here. I know this is getting long, so I'll, I'll move along. This is the appropriate action to take when you have a snake on your property. You look at it with respect and be in awe at nature. And hopefully you will have these wonderful hunters that are helping you. He disappeared up underneath the pine, all the pine, pine chunks there. This is a black king snake. Right now, he is looking for food. Um, <laughs> I told you that already. But he's, he may be looking, he, he'll eat lizards, he'll eat frogs, bugs of many kinds. Uh, but one thing about a black king snake, um, and this is, I'm not sure what exact species it is, whether it's black king snake or eastern black, that may be the same thing. Uh, they're also resistant <clears throat> to um, like copperhead venom. Different uh, snake, di different venomous snakes, venom, and um, they will eat copperheads. This snake will eat the copperheads that you don't want on your property. Nature wants a copperhead on their property, okay? But, um, you know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people say, oh, it's a black snake, it's going to hurt us. Snake's not hurting us. If it was a copperhead, it wouldn't hurt me. If I didn't mess with it. Now, if I go messing with him, it's going to disturb his hunt. I want him to find whatever it is he's looking for and not scare him. My property is a, um, is a sanctuary for all the life. I wish he would poke his head back up. He's got something nailed down in this area. Uh, there, he's, he's up over there right now. But... Um, if I go picking him up, he's going to crap all over me, probably. I don't want to do that. Uh, I've got to get this video finished up and uh, and get it uploaded. Uh, maybe he's about to bust his head up here. Pop his head up. Well, I won't. I want to pick him up. <laughs> King snakes are kind of feisty, though. They will bite you. People talk about how, oh, it's an aggressive snake. It's it's mean. It's terrible. It's going to chase you. No, it's not going to chase you. It's not going to do all that. And if somebody was picking you up, some giant, some giant creature was picking you up. Oh, there he is. There he is. Where's his head? Right. Right there. There's his head. If somebody was attacking you, wouldn't you want to defend yourself? Look at that. Beauty. A beautiful black king snake. Beautiful uh, eastern, I, I'm going to say it's an eastern black king snake. Look at him. That's, what my, that's why I do what I do on my property. To see these kind of things. And I'm getting eat up by a bunch of devil's walking stick on my back right now. Beautiful snake right there, folks. All right, let me let him go. And uh, actually, <laughs> he kind of uh, fits into the subject matter of my day today. This is the subject of what I wanted to bring to you today. The devil's walking stick. Now, just a couple of days ago, the spirit the shoots on this. See, I cut this down. I cut this down about a week, about a week or two ago. Cut it down right here. It sprouted back. Now, as it comes out, it's very soft, very much edible, raw or cooked. Okay. Now, it doesn't take long though for its spikes 
to get to be something that will just absolutely do torment on your hands or any other part of your body. They were just eating me up when I was over there with the king snake. Yeah. An amazing plant. It has many medicinal properties. Um, I can't speak to them, but again, there's other people that can. Now, it gives me an idea. These were a food source for the Native Americans. All right, and you can find them out there, but it's only the young ones, right? Only the young tender leaves that you want to mess with, okay, as a food. So why don't we do a little of this? Why don't we do a little more pruning here? Why don't we just take the heads off of these devils? and get us some fresh greenery coming up out of here. I have an imagination, or an imagination, and I have an idea that one way that the Native Americans would have used this as a food source to its potential would be to have a garden that they cultivated just like this. Here's another quick break for nature. Look at him. One of my favorite little noisemakers out here. He's hanging out in one of these devil's walking sticks, trying not to be seen. And I'm trying not to fall right now. Look at how beautiful he is. All right, let me just put him back up there. Completely disappears in here. What we're looking at here is just the striking beauty. I think, of uh, the red sumac. Look at the almost jewel tones, the rich tones of this young sprout that's coming out. The tender, fresh growth here. Amazingly beautiful to me. It's these little things that matter so much to me. And they're free. All I have to do is appreciate them. Appreciate those wild things. Here's another species of brambleberry. It's not a blackberry. It's something else. You'll notice that it's growing on a stalk. Okay? Notice also, this is what they call a droop. Any kind of fruit like that that's got all the little berries to it, it's called a droop. It's a cluster of berries. Mmm. And a slightly, slightly tart cluster of berries at that. It's not ripe yet. But... There are many kinds. We're looking at something. We're looking at the place where I cut down for some poles for frost protection not long ago. And all of these have shot back up. It's very fast growing. This devil's walking stick, it, it's either devil's walking stick, all of this is red sumac. Um, <laughs> powerful plant. I've got that and I've got devil's walking stick. So here's what I'm going to do. Just like I did before. I'm going to prune back the hard growth that's here on this. And you look at that. Look here. You got how my knuckle that I buried a thorn in uh, a while back over a month ago now is still not quite right. You grab a hold of that and you're going to suffer. But if you get a hold of that tender growth that is coming out of the top, you're going to have a meal. So let's just give this a haircut. Let's cut off the devil's head here and see how this works. Okay? I believe that the Native Americans would have done something just like that. As the new growth comes on and it's tender, they can go and collect it. They had ways of doing things. We can too. What I see here is a field of invasive species. Well, not invasive because they're native. But they send their roots out. And I don't like them. But they can also grow me some food that I can count on. Nature is the best gardener that there is. And in your area, she has many species that you can count on. Okay? Let's see. One more thing. I'm going to let this wrap up. Oh, it's a mess back here. It grows so fast. 
little poke salad right here on the coal burn, slow, slow burning pile. Where'd I see it? Right there. See that little green stalk? Oh, I'm in some bad footing right here. I'm probably going to carry every tick with me back to the house. All right, look here. This stalk is going to be a bright red. Many of you have seen them. Many of you haven't. I'll bring it to you later. It's going to be a bright red. That'll be edible. Okay. This has been enough, except I do want to um, bring up one thing. When I, I told you about Tanya Neal, Immediately after that, um, I, I showed you the clip where, where I saw the, uh, the the black snake. I said, I was just talking to you about Tanya Neal, and now here's a snake. <laughs> I said that so that you would know the time frame. And I don't want that to stick in your mind that, hey, you know, Tanya Neal and the snake is the same. It's not. Uh, these are both angels. They're angels in my garden. Now, Tanya Neal is not in my garden, but some of her knowledge is in my head. She is a southern angel, and you go find her, and you'll find one of the treasures of the south. Someone with knowledge of the wild things. And when you find nature's little angels out there, the snakes that are trying to help you, leave them alone. Just let them do their job. If it's a venomous snake or you can't identify it, leave it alone. That's the fastest way that you're going to send yourself to the ER and possibly lose one of these little fingers that you're so proud of. Okay. On Facebook, there is the free snake relocation directory. Find them now if you are afraid of snakes. Increase your knowledge of the wild things. Increase your knowledge of the plants that are in your area. Learn about mushrooms. Our fears is what, our, our ignorance, ignorance is what breeds fear. Learn about what you're afraid of and you can grow stronger and eliminate your fear. You eliminate fear with knowledge. And so today that's, uh, before my phone cuts out again or I get too long-winded, I know I am. Um, goodbye from Homestead Aquarius on this Shed Wars Day. I hope I've given you the inspiration to go out and learn something that you can use. You may have to. Learn how to grow your own food. Learn how to find it in the wild. And learn about nature's gifts to us. From Homestead Aquarius, I'll see you tomorrow.